again everyone Tracy here from mini scenes today um, you're gonna see the aftermath of me trying to tidy out my craft room I keep finding craft materials that I could totally forgotten I'd got they must be donkey's years old I'm talking uh, 10 15 years plus even in the case of these they might have even moved house with me 22 years ago I'm not sure I haven't used them since then probably and they are from Peebo Vitria if that's how you pronounce it glass paints just I don't know whether these some of them seem to have gone gloopy some have gone in the bin but it was a big box set um, some of them are still that one's quite thick but some of them you can actually oh which ones yeah, some of them, you can still hear them glooping around if, if I shake them. So rather than just chuck them all away, um, I will try them on glass at some point, obviously. But rather than just chuck them away, I thought we'd see what would happen if I used them with resin. Um, so I have got with me resin already mixed. That's just degassing now, letting the bubbles out a little bit, you see. The resin I'm using is my current favourite from Union Jack Arts. Uh, I'll put the links below as normal. I presume you can still get these glass paints, don't know. If they don't work it's absolutely no reflection on whether they're any good or not because clearly I am using them in resin and they are they could be 20 odd years old, I don't know. So I seem to remember when I did use them they were very good. The other things I've got are my favourite little mould for testing things because it's just a handy size, got lots of different shapes and depths. It's just the job, probably needs a good clean. As you can see, it's very well loved and used, this one. Uh, but that's there. I've also got some shot glasses because I might try mixing some of the colours up in these little plastic shot glasses. Other than that, we have a paintbrush. I don't know why, we just have. I'll see what I do with that later. We have my stirry thing, which is a plastic cocktail stick. We have my nice new heat gun which helps to dissipate bubbles and of course my gloves respirator all the other PPE things that are wise when using something as evil as resin so what I'm going to do then I'm going to pour some resin into some of these pots obviously I'm in a well ventilated room it goes without saying I actually in my kitchen and the kitchen door is wide open into the back garden where it is pouring with rain. So the plan is uh, put some of this in some of these pots, some of these little moulds rather, like so. You can see which ones are my favourite. I've obviously used the heat gun on these rather too much. You have to be so careful using heat guns on silicon moulds. When I get to the mould I'll turn it right down. Um, I know a lot of people won't use heat guns at all on them. I just give it a quick zap though. Um, but with these you can see some of them have actually gone white and that is where I've probably used it too much and like today forgotten to use my mould release which is a silicon spray that protects the mould. Completely forgot it. Anyway, uh, I'm just filling some of these up and then I'm going to put some in the little pots as well. And the little pots will be for trying to see what happens when you actually mix it like, you know, like you're mixing colours into your resin. So we're going to have a variety of things going on here. Uh, let's do a big one. I'm not filling these quite up. I, I honestly don't know what's going to happen when I come to putting the colours in. How much space they'll take up, if at all. It might only be the tiniest drop. I might put loads. I don't know. Anyway, we'll see what happens. I'm not filling them right up anyway. Leaving a bit of room. Except for one of the hearts. I filled that a bit much. Now, I'm going to pour some in some of these little pots. so we can see what happens. And then I'm gonna let it sit before I do anything. I'm just gonna let it sit for half an hour or so, to thicken a bit. And then we'll have a play and see what we can do with possibly 20 year old 
glass paint. One thing I will need to do is get another stirry stick out. We're doing that with. We'll clean this one up. I'll try and clean this one up. The other thing I use a lot of, I know a lot of crafters use baby wipes for cleaning the tools and the hands and everything. Um, I The smell of baby wipes oh, it just makes me want to heave. So I've got Wonder Wipes. Um, which I got from either eBay or Amazon. I think it was Amazon. I'll put the link for that below as well. I buy them in whopping big buckets because I clean my mats with them and everything. There we go then. While I have a clean up, I'm going to let this sit for a short while, probably half an hour. Right, and I'm back. Bubbles see, have dissipated quite well. So I'm going to just show you what I mean by a quick zap with my torch. Quick click, quick zap, something like that. If you try that as a way to get rid of bubbles, um, it gives off fumes. I don't know if you can see the smoke that just came off that one. It gives off fumes when you do it, so be careful. Uh, make sure you've got your, your PPE on the go. Um, the other thing to note is that it does wreck your moulds. These little pots are pretty, they stand a reasonable amount of heat, but it, uh, it does over a period of time wreck your moulds. So that so whilst I'm not quite so worried about leaving the torch on when it's in those little pots, um, the in the moulds, that is as much as I risk and it's on a fairly low setting. See how you get on, but I, I, as you can see, I have, see where they've gone white? I have damaged some of my moulds doing that. So uh, yeah, be careful. Right, we're going to start playing with some colours. And just because I love purple, we're going to try this one first. Amaranth. I think that's how you pronounce the colour. I have given them all a shake. Now, this one, judging by the sound of it, has thickened up a lot while it's been stood for so long. I don't know if you can see that, but it is, yeah, it's quite thick in there. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Looks like the colours stayed with it though. Because I like purple so much, we're going to have, we're going to try mixing it in with the bigger pot that I've got here. Okay, observation so far, it seems to mix quite well. Although it's going a little misty. Don't know, let's see what happens. What I also want to see is creating bubbles look. But then I am stirring it. Don't know. Let's see what happens there. But, um, one thing I am looking out for is does it make it flash cure? That's the other thing. Uh, right. This one I'm going to get. Same one still, but it's quite thick. So I'm going to get a stick. A pointy stick. See if I can get like a swirl thing going. Not over optimistic about it. Oh, nothing. Oh, hang on. <laughs> right, I'm going to try that again because I don't know if you can see. Let me bring you in a bit closer. But that was swirling and it isn't blurring in with the resin much. And this has only been sat for half an hour. So I'm going to get brave and take quite a bit on my stick. and let it drip, if it'll drip. It's so thick. Now, it's, I wouldn't want to try and use this on the glass, I think. I think it's too thick. Right, big blob. Ooh. Okay, that's interesting. This, ah, yeah. There might be some mileage in doing something like that. So I'm trying not to stir it in or to swirl it. That's quite interesting. Okay. A bit messy. Didn't stir it in a very organised fashion. This um, glass paint, by the way, is air drying. It's not the sort you have to bake on. 
as some you do. What's interesting here is that one. On the bottle, it looks well, and that actually. On the bottle, it looks very pinky. It's actually quite a deep violet. So let's see what pink. Oh, this doesn't sound very liquid either. I've already had to throw some away. Some had just separated beyond. Whoa, messy. Some had separated beyond doing anything with them. Actually, let's. Uh, I'll keep control on the surface. <laughs> I don't know what, but this might have uses at some point in the distant future. It's going very strange on the surface. Right, let's try the pinky one. It's kept a nice colour. Being glass paints, they're not staying as translucent as I thought. I thought we'd end up with them absolutely clear, but we'll see. Don't know what I'm going to do with all these other monsters now. Ooh. This is what happens when you don't plan it and you just try it and you just do things as you go along. So that's kind of weird and interesting. I might put a sparkly back on it or something when it's dry, but I think I'm going to leave it at that. These are the little pots. Mixing up quite well. Still leaving them to stand. They seem to have got quite a lot of bubbles. Partly my mixing, partly. There you go. You can see everything from there. Uh, partly my mixing, partly. Um, don't know <laughs> whether it's reacting. Ah, now this one sounds. This is a blue, deep blue. Right, this one sounds like it's mixed up better. I don't know, yeah, stick with the stick. I'm trying to be really careful. This one, ah, this one's a bit more liquidy. Oh, look. It's acting more like alcohol inks, only thicker. Interesting. Yeah, when you're using a pointy stick like this, sorry, I'm just thinking out loud and talking. It's probably not the best way to make a video. Um, oh, that's very dark. It's more of a purple. Yeah, try not to scratch the mould. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> I'm going to mix more purple in with the one that's supposed to be purple anyway. It is really strange how um, these colours are behaving. Where was I? Oh, stop waffling, Tracy. Um, yes, if you if you scratch the mould, you're kind of stuck with it. So um, best not scratch the moulds and the tip of your stick you need to just be into the surface rather than right down deep into the mold just just be careful you don't catch the mold with the stick because it will therefore end up being imprinted in everything that you produce thereafter with that mold now this one is very liquidy i seem to remember this, this is a color i loved green gold yeah i love green gold so i'm going to put some drops in that one Uh, might put some in with this purple too. What is interesting, I'm looking to see whether it's going to push about like alcohol ink does. Hmm, huh, don't know. We shall see. I'm going to try and do a swirly one as well with this green gold. visible as doing it with um, alcohol inks and the like but still pretty interesting so the green gold appears to be a keeper I just don't know what it'll do once it cures that one's just all starting to blur now there, there was a white oh white sinker I have a feeling this won't work
don't know where my bottle of CD has gone. So I'm just going to try the one from a Resinate. This one. Again, if, if this doesn't work, this oh, this is a pigment. Oh, well, let's see what happens. If this doesn't work, this is no reflection on the product. These, remember, these are ancient materials. And this is actually meant to be a pigment, not an ink. So mm, that might, that should mean it's thicker, really, shouldn't it? So let's see what happens. Actually, yeah, let's see if it will make, um, let's mix some actual pigment in one of these pots. See, that's acting a bit like alcohol ink, I reckon. Now, these ones in the little pot. I want to see what happens when you just drop it like that straight into an existing ink mould. Can I get like a, a almost a lava lamp effect? It's going to be messy, I think. The other thing that I want to do is just literally that, just fill up some mould with it. Doopy doopy do. I might end up with a load of this going to waste. I mixed a bit much, but let's see. You see, that's a lot more purpley now it's in the mould. Because I put a bit of the stuff that was meant to be blue but turned out to be purple in with it. If you look at the colour difference between this and the base in that one, that first one. No, uh, let's find one that's not got much in so far at all, if any. Here we go. Let's half fill this one. Let's see if I can get a half and half going. I am going to swirl these ones that I dip the uh, pigment on top in a minute. See, they've gone quite bubbly, but it's quite a nice look. It's, uh, oops. I accidentally dropped a bit of pink in that one middle. It's just got the white pigment in it, so... <laughs> you know what? It's pouring with rain outside and there's nothing nicer on a wet day than messing about when you're supposed to be doing something useful. God knows what this is going to do. I really don't know. I'm wondering if I'm going to end up with some sort of like weird marbled effect. Because this is pushing the white down. Although granted that was white pigment, not alcohol ink, but it's dragging it. It's dragging it. Ooh. This could be interesting. Right, where was the one I was trying to do half and half? I was going to pour this in at one end. I'm going to have to zoom you in on that white one in a minute. like it might work. There's no science to this at all, you know. I'm just doing it. Just doing it. I don't know if you can hear the rain in the background, but it's blimmin' horrible out there. Yeah, I'm going to zoom you in so you can watch what this white is doing. If you remember that one, I just plopped some white resonate pigment which I picked up by accident because I couldn't find my CD but and then drizzled some of the pink that was just glass paint over the top isn't that weird can you see how it's pulling in I wonder if I can zoom with my gloves on isn't that odd Be interesting to see what happens with that okay let's just bring you back up again of course, it will go a good few hours before we really see what's happened. There we are. Oop. Right, I think you've got the main stuff in shot again. Right, this is the white pigment that I mixed. Just white pigment. So, in with... So, this is perfectly normal resin stuff. Resonate pigment and putting that in one end. And we've got a blob of the pink 
from the gloss panks in the other uh like this one i've just got the two different colors of glass paints at either end so i'm going to just put a blob of white pigment in don't know why just um same with this one i'm really intrigued by what this is doing that's amazing i reckon i might have just discovered how to do spots in resin discovered i'm sure somebody else has done that before <laughs> right Let's have the rest of the white in there i hope this does something because i don't like throwing away stuff it just seems an awful waste even if i haven't used it for years and my Crafts have changed and it's not my thing anymore. The problem I have with glass paints is it isn't durable enough, really. Um, the ones that you bake on. These are the ones that you bake on. <laughs> I should look before I threw the box away. P uh, Vitral 160, it says on them. I've got a feeling that might be an oven temperature. It says that on some of them anyway. And not others. I don't know. Anyway, resin gets pretty darn hot when it's uh, curing, so and it's mixed well in. So we'll see what happens. Here we go. Just cleaning up my little little pot. I'll probably use that again. Mucky cloth. <coughs> Just while we're on the subject of cloths, these are my bad boy wipes. <sighs> okay, that's them. Whacking big tub. Can't remember how much they are, but I'll put you a link. But I find them pretty awesome. That's a box, that's a tub of 300 wipes. So that keeps me going for a bit. Right then, I'm going to try and get a bit more pink into this one. I can get a bit out the corners. See? Don't walk wasting. I'm just quite intrigued as to how that's mixing. Getting some odd reactions. I'm going to try all this with nail varnish at some point, by the way. I gave away something like 200 nail varnishes recently. And I just still have lots. <laughs> Including UV curing ones. A lot of UV curing ones. So I might have a bit of a play. I think that cloth's had it. I might have a bit of a play and see what UV curing nail varnish does especially if you can, obviously you can use it in conjunction with uv resin i have used it to back uv resin items before because you know usually black you can't really cure with uv but the um nail polish ones you can i don't know why but you can Right, some of these are doing some really quite cute, interesting stuff. Let's try another colour. So here I have turquoise blue, which sounds nice. Sounds like it stayed quite liquidy. Yeah, it has. Bit of stick with me stick. I was going to try something with me paintbrush, but I just haven't. Oh, you see, that makes a nice swirl. Hmm. So if you were just going for a swirl and you didn't want a fancy Petri effect or anything, mix a bit of this blue, this green gold as well. Oh. Yeah, if you were just going for the swirl, might be some mileage in that, I don't know. Uh, the green, right, let's have a look at what's going on in these little pots. The purpley blue bluey purple the one i mixed a bit more blue in with to make it uh, more purpley a bit more purple in with oh you know what i mean that one um it's got quite grainy i don't know if you can see but there's a bit of a kind of a graininess to it 
So I'll be interested to see what these two come out like because they are just that on its own. Put a dot more in. I think I'm going to have to degas them again as well. Ah. I wonder if now it's like this you can... I don't know. Putting a dot in those. Where I just put the pigment. See, those haven't sunk. Pigment hasn't sunk there. Um, in fact, it seems to be sitting on the surface. This stuff's a lot thicker than the pigment. Interesting. I'm going to swirl something with that though. Just because I can't help myself. Oh, I see, that's kind of interesting. I don't know what it'll look like on the other side, whether you'll even be able to see the white. Don't know. And I'm going to put a little bit of this purple into here just because I can <laughs> give it a bit of another colour to play with push it up into the white it's almost like a purpley flame effect that's going to look like a sweet isn't it that first one god knows what's going on with that but just for the hell of it oh it's gone stringy on the surface look at that Ooh, that's weird. <laughs> it's going to be just a globby mess, that one. Uh, right, this is the one that was meant to be blue, but actually turns out to be a really nice purple. So let's pull some of that around in this one. I can't help thinking if I back some of these with white, might work nicely. Oh, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Certainly seems to have found a way of doing an easy swirl. Right, I'm going to just mix some of these, just put some of these into these so as not to waste. You know how it is, you can always find uses for little odd bits. I've always got a mould handy so that completely goes to waste. I've just got a big box of like odd bits. You can set your odd bits into coasters and all sorts of things. And you never know when someone might say, could you make me some purple heart earrings? You know, you just don't want to leave it sat in a pot wasting, do you? Uh, might put some of that white pigment. Oh, and I've run out, haven't I? I'll put some of the else in the back of this. Oh, I don't know. I could just drop the white pigment in, couldn't I? Rather than the mixed version. That's what I did on some of them, wasn't it? Oh, I'm making a mess now. I was getting my proper stirry stick, hadn't I? <laughs> it's going everywhere. Right, okay, try to push this into the mould. I'll clean this up in a minute. Yeah, made a right mess. Pot cleaning time soon. <clears throat> Still liking this uh, turquoise. So what else have we got? Let's see if we can mix a bit in with the purple. You can't see off camera is that I am actually wiping this stick in between dips. Now this is going kind of jellyish on the surface. Very strange. So I'm going to do something with this one before it goes any further. Whoa! Weird marbling effect. Oh, I dipped it straight in without uh, cleaning that time. Oh, it's going to be messy.
I'd like to top on that one. This was the green, green gold. And as you can see, it's stayed clear and it hasn't gone bitty, which is interesting. Put a bit more in that one. Drizzled a bit into that one. I hope you remember this one's just got the paints in at the moment. I hadn't put any that was mixed with pigment, I don't think. I really want to keep more note of what I'm doing. I can watch my own video back later, of course. <laughs> that one, I'm just going to put a blob in the middle. This one had got a bit of purple as well, hadn't it? So let's drizzle a little bit. to do now let's put half let's do half and half in that one i don't know what purple and gold green go like when you mix them together <laughs> probably mud but as they're fairly opposite on the color wheel they do contrast quite nicely so the colors that, co that coordinate contrast whatever but whether they will work where they meet or turn into mud, that's a different matter. Uh, a little bit more of the bluey purpley because there's a drip in the bottom still. Just trying to top this one up basically. So we end up with a full doobry. Doobry, that's today's word. Okay, I'm gonna stop messing. Um, I was going to swirl this one um, but it seems to be doing something interesting what I might do is just swirl a little bit of it like that to go with the heart shape and I'm going to try where's that pigment gone Another little drip of the pigment on these. That one's gone really black. So let's try putting some pigment on the back. And same with this one. See if it will sit on the top like an ink would. <laughs> this is only because I picked the pigment up by accident, if you remember. I'll put a pigment on the back of that as well. Yeah, I, I, know, I don't know where my CD per is. Oh, it's kind of odd. It's a bit more. I don't know where my CD per is. Pick this up thinking it was white pig, white sinker and it isn't. It's pigment. Ooh. Interesting. Right, I'm going to stop waffling now. Um, I might put a bit of pigment. Actually, no. Waffle a bit longer. I'm going to put a bit of pigment on the back of this. Blimey, me, we're up to 28 minutes. <laughs> I'm going to do nothing more i'm hoping this will just form a backing i'm going to do nothing more now i am going to just watch and the next thing you will see is the demolded versions and the verdict just give them a quick flash from my torch and that's it so i'll see you um in a oh, good few hours probably 12 hours at least if not, it'll be tomorrow morning. Bye. Well, here we go. 24 hours later, since I started basically messing around and waffling as I did so with the leftovers of um, all my old glass paints. So let's see what happened. Um, obviously, I did various bits of messing about here and I started plunking in some white pigments as well. So... Let's see if we can remember. <laughs> I don't remember what I did. Right, these were ones that were just the glass paints. Well, I would say if you're just going, it's not very transparent. So if you're going for a slightly smoky look, it 
happier. You could use glass paints. This one I put half and half. And you, I don't know if you remember, but the um, green gold stayed transparent. So I would say that's quite successful with the green gold part. The purple, same again, it's gone quite opaque. Uh, very opaque. This is the one that was a lot darker. Hmm. I'm just going to get the ones that I didn't do much else with out first. So same again. Although they're quite nice. They're very shiny because this mould's pretty decent still in most places. Might be able to do something with those. Uh, and I think this was just a solid colour too. Yeah, kind of smoky. Right, now the ones I messed with. Let's do this little chop first. If I remember, I just plonked some of the white pigment on the back. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Odd. Different. Not very exciting though. Okay. Uh, this one, I put the two colours in pigment at one. Oh, it's kind of weird, isn't it? Purple didn't really do anything, but the pinky colour kind of worked. Don't know if there's going to be a use for that, but hey, it's quite pretty. This was the first one I did where I just swizzled it around in it and oh, it <laughs> didn't really do a lot, did it? The white pigment seems to have done most. Actually, though, look at that. <laughs> white pigment's done something quite fun. If you remember, I picked up white pigment because I couldn't find the sea deeper. And thought, so, oh, yeah, what the hell? Picked up the wrong thing, but never mind. Interesting. It kind of dried on the surface, which was odd. This one looked as if it might do something funky. Oh, and it has. I don't know whether it's anything useful, but it's certainly funky. I don't know if you can see there's a sort of a, a 3D effect going on in there. Bit of a weird reaction. So that was just the ink swirl, the, sorry, glass paint swirls. That was the one that on the surface, it behaved more like alcohol inks. Then I put a bit of the white pigment on top and swirled it again. And that's mm, different. I think the long and the short of this is it might be worth experimenting with glass paint. Uh, that's not really done a lot, but it does do a nice pink to purple fade. That was the one I put some dots of white in the back, which don't seem to have done anything frankly yeah this might be worth experimenting with again at some point i don't know these are the various shades of green oh that's interesting um i don't know what technique you'd call that but it's kind of kind of like it that was purple um like an aqua greeny bluey color and the, the dollop of the green gold in the middle and then some white pigment on the back again this was the same I think I swirled it a bit more and look not a lot happened with that one hmm the backs of these ones are interesting might be interesting to put a black on the back of them oh um kind of weird and interesting on a big scale that would make a nice like paperweight or something the colors are pretty good considering it's ancient glass paint it's just the um but a lot of the funkiness yeah okay it's touched the surface but a lot of the funkiness is more down to the white pigment now that one's gone quite 3d you can see that where i swirled the other shade of green inside Hmm. This should be a big version of that one. Yeah, kind of bizarre. I don't, I don't know whether these would make jewellery really or not, but I think I'm coming to a verdict on whether you can use glass paints or not. Ooh, oh, sticky bit on the back of that one still, but yeah, weird and wonderful. Colours have held, considering how old these glass paints are, you know. 
This is one that I put pink, uh, put the white and then just put a bit of pink. Um, interesting effect. It's interesting that dripping the white pigment on actually created spores. I did swirl this one, if you remember. And the white pigment has sunk and has created spores. Sunk a bit too much, it's hit the surface, but just makes me wonder if I have problems getting the C deeper to do enough of the white sink effect. Maybe put a few drops of um, neat pigment in it. I don't know. This was the one I kind of swirled and did more like traditional Petri effect with. And yeah, it's just kind of smudges. It is quite 3D though. <laughs> the colours are quite pretty. I don't know what I'm going to do with these. Might stick spikes in them and use them as price label stands for ones like that. That's what I tend to do with my failed ones. I'll, uh, I'll make a little video on doing those at some point. But anyway, I can't find a cleanish bit on my mat. These, I don't know whether you'd say they've worked. Depends what you're kind of trying to do. That one I might do something with. That might become a necklace. I don't know. But they're interesting. These are kind of meh. Well, you know, they are what they are. These are the ones over here. But these... I kind of like them. I don't know what they're supposed to be, but I do kind of like them. <laughs> anyway, there you go. Rather long video of me rambling and messing about with a load of 20, I think. I think they're about 20 year old glass paints and resin and white pigment and generally just making a mess in my kitchen. I uh, hope that gave you something to giggle at and maybe a bit of food for thought because it does look like there might be mileage in glass paints. I'll see if I can experiment more with this technique at some point because I do think that's rather nice. Yeah, anyway, there you go. Thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. Buttons down here as usual. Appreciate your support. Channel's very new, so um, all of your comments, likes, all that sort of thing, and subscriptions really help me to get this going. And also, do pop in comments anything you would like to see me experiment with uh, as a result of having seen this video. I am more than happy to use up my stuff so that you can save having a, a nightmare with your own. <laughs> Take care, all, enjoy your crafting.